In this demonstration we introduce a request based debugging. We focus on NetWeaver Release 7 Enhancement Package 2. With request based debugging you can debug all external HTTP or RFC requests of the particular end user, independent of which user of the above application server and which application server currently executes the request. The execution of the requests of other end users will not be affected, what is essentially for a productive system. We will demonstrate the request-based debugging by using a WebDIN Pro application which represents a bookshop. We have a bookshop where we can go to buy books. The first one costs around $50 and we put it into the basket. Now we want to execute our order and press Confirm Invoice. Until now it was rolled $50 but suddenly it is more than 13,000 and we want to find out what's going on here. We are lucky that we know the application and also know where to set a breakpoint. Here is the WebDimper application. The backend system is MOD. When you press the confirm button an RFC is executed in the booking system BCE. So we need to set an external breakpoint in the RFC module of the booking system BCE to stop and to do this we go to the RFC module in the system BCE and the module is this one here for booking items and we go over utility settings to bargain and we see that our user is active here for external requests and now we will set a user breakpoint in this row and we expect that we will stop here when we execute the WebDream Pro application so let's repeat refresh select the book add to the shopping cart Confirm order, confirm invoice. This is starting to get expensive. It hasn't stopped and we have just spent more than $13,000 again. Why are we having this problem? In general, there can be different reasons for this behavior. The one reason could be because there are normally multiple servers in a backend system of this type. Logon balancing decides which server a request is assigned to. The user breakpoint, however, is only active on the server where it is set. If the request is executed on another server, then it does not stop. The second reason is user mapping. For example, we start with the user A in the MOD system, and a mapping to another user is then executed in the RFC. It could be also a generic user, such as a job that maps or requests to a user. If the breakpoint is set for such a user, then every client of this job would wait in the debugger. And the idea is that the developer concentrates on the breakpoint and request. The breakpoint is set, the request is sent, and then it stops. And the solution is request-based debugging. The idea is here that a GUI ID, a terminal ID, is stored on the terminal, a laptop in this case, and this terminal ID is saved along with the breakpoint. If, for example, the WebDIM Pro application is started from this laptop, then the terminal ID is sent with the request by using a browser plugin, first of all through the browser, then through the backend MOD, and lastly to the booking system BCE. This terminal ID will be sent over with every other RFC, and the debugger starts once the terminal ID of the request matches the terminal ID of the user breakpoint. And the breakpoint has also to function irrespective of the servers. And the browser plugin that is required for sharing the terminal ID using Internet Explorer is this one here. First we will set a new breakpoint. Under Utility Settings Debugging we can activate external debugging via terminal ID. This is the GUI ID that we just explained. We will activate it and then we will reset the user breakpoint. And now we start the browser plugin. And it starts the browser and then we will see the plugin. We are allowed to pass the terminal ID and we execute the WebGene for application. Again all the steps and want to execute our order. And now we activate it. 
we press Start Transaction. Confirm order, confirm invoice, and the debugger starts. We are now in the RFC module. It has stopped without us having do anything. And we investigate usernames. And we see that user mapping has taken place here. We have now a generic user purchaser. And we will take a look at the system ID and we see it is BC and our breakpoint worked. So breakpoints work as normal. We stop as they do for the GUI transactions. And now we can debug our booking order. We have just seen how to debug HTTP requests by using Terminal ID and Browser plugin. To debug GUI requests, you just have to prompt slash HTID in your GUI window and the Terminal ID will be sent along with all requests from this window. If you then activate debugging via Terminal ID and set external breakpoint at your remote function module, you can then start GUI request and the debugger will stop at your external breakpoint. Now we will see how to use request-based debugging in situations where a user who sets a breakpoint and a user who sends a request are two different end users and the request is coming physically from other PC or laptop. You can experience such situations in support where a request is coming from one user via remote SAP GUI or browser via WTS and you want to debug the code function with your user on your machine. And we will take RFC request as example. With use of request-based debugging, the local user VWXYZ will activate the terminal ID and set external user breakpoint. Then he has to inform the remote user ABCD about the terminal ID and sends it, for example, per email. The remote user ABCDE activates his SAP GUI window for this terminal ID and starts the request. Terminal ID will be sent along with the RFC request and since it's the terminal ID of the machine of the user VWXYZ, the debugger will start and stop at user breakpoint. Let's take a look at it in the demo. In this remote system B20, we have a user ABCDE who wants to debug this report Z test rec based, in which a remote function call is sent to the system BCE. We want to debug the RFC function module with our local application user VWXYZ. And we need to set external breakpoint. We go over utility settings debugging and activated terminal ID. Now we can set an external user breakpoint. After the breakpoint is set, we have to inform the remote user ABCDE about this terminal ID. We can send it per email or tell it on the phone. After the user ABCDE knows the terminal ID, he activates it in his sub GUI window with a special command slash H set TID equals and then the TID and from now on all requests from his sub GUI window get associated with this terminal ID. Now the report is executing the remote function call. And the user VWXYZ sees how the debugger appears and stops at his user breakpoint in the RFC function module and can now debug the function module locally on his machine. Now you have seen how to debug GUI requests of remote user. For request-based debugging of HTTP requests, there is also a possibility to transmit terminal ID by entering it in the special field for terminal ID of the browser plugin. This feature is available in the browser plugin since the service spec 19. So, this was a demonstration about the request-based debugging. You have seen how to debug external requests of a special end-user independent of application server and application server users. Thank you for your attention.